he started out having more of a creator or accused kind of voice, more of a like, like the raspier, higher stuff, which is still killer and in, in a way could be considered a different type of death metal vocal. I knew early on when I was singing cover songs that I could never really sing high, like Rob Halford or Jeff Tate, which I loved. I wish I could have sang like that, but I just didn't have that register in my voice, so I just kind of kept trying to blend my voice into the music a little bit more. He went from here to like really low, like guttural vocal, like super low. Just like, whoa, <laughs> this is crazy sound. <laughs> Just decided that was the way to go with the lyrics he was writing and the music we were writing. It's just kind of fit. And it was a natural thing for him to just go lower and lower and <laughs> see how heavy the vocals could be. The music was getting heavier and more chunky and just brutal. So I figured I would have to become another instrument as far as on top of the music. Lawrence had his own style and definitely was instantly recognizable. Really, when you think back, who was the first guttural singer? Chris would have to be one of the first ones for sure. I don't know where it started from, to be honest with you. I don't know who, what band was the first that came up with it. Do you know? Chuck probably would be the first real death metal singer, I guess, from, you know, from death. Everybody used to tell Chuck, you, you're the godfather of death metal. You created death metal. And Chuck was very uncomfortable with that thing because he was like, God, you know, bands were doing this before me. I mean, Possessed. They have a song called Death Metal, for God's sake. You could probably argue Jeff Becerra from Possessed, but he wasn't maybe as guttural, you know? There's so many different versions of it so I'd, I'd say it's hard to really judge the initial you know everybody has a different answer on it venom possessed celtic frost hellhammer yeah hellhammer was a big thing for us we hear that the song triumph of death and it was just like he was screaming like he was getting murdered and we figured that's ultimate like really have someone like killing somebody what's that going to sound like i heard the obituary record we heard john tardy's vocals and we were like you know, what the hell is this? I'm like, this guy is God. And the next guy says, well, if he goes, rrr, 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 I'm gonna go, rrr, rrr, rrr. people that listen to death metal, unless you have like a death metal decoder in your brain and you actually can speak in that low tone or whatever, you don't know what the hell's going on. It just sounds like a monster's on the microphone. Just for you. <laughs> Mortician. They had really low vocals before we did, Immolation did. I think it just kind of had a slow evolution. I feel as though I had a good hand in laying the foundation of what the death metal vocalist is. I'm sure there's been lots of people that have tried to imitate him as well. I actually started doing these kind of vocals by out, trying to outdo Chris Barnes. People were going, how can a human voice do that? Most of the good singers, especially Chris, is, you didn't have to do a lot of effects to them to make them sound heavy. I mean, they sounded heavy on their own. A lot of people thought that there was harmonizers used, and I guess some bands have used harmonizers. With the deep vocals, a lot of guys cheated. Maybe they slowed down the tape or put a lot of echo on it. There was none of that going on with Chris. It was important for them to let people know, look, we didn't rely on a studio or an effect to make us brutal or my voice to yeah, sound this way. They're like purists. Like, we went in and did it right. <laughs>